Hi, I'm Amory, and I am here with the Amory's Book Club selection for the month of February, which is Dearborn by Hassan Zayadine. In this wonderful, endearing collection of short stories, we learn about the lives of those who live in Dearborn. The stories are each focused on different people, the different families, but there are little Easter eggs that run through each story. So you, you, you hear about, there's a little name drop of someone that you read about prior. This collection is aptly named because I really got the feeling that I was invisible and just sitting in the middle of a community watching everyone's lives, like the secret lives of all the individuals. Uh, who live here. Dearborn, Michigan is known as the Arab American capital of the United States. Even people overseas, when they hear about Dearborn, it's kind of like K-Town. Like when I was trying to convince my mom to move to LA, I was like, there's K-Town. Except Dearborn, Michigan is an entire city. So there is a majority Muslim and a majority Arab American uh, population that lives in Dearborn. It's really fascinating how everyone came to live there. Uh, if you want to know more, you can just Google. There's lots of information regarding how people, you know, moved to Dearborn. I think one of the really big reasons, if not the largest reason, was the Ford Motor Company. So when they came in, I, I've heard it said a couple of times, the $5 jobs, way, way back in the day in the 40s, you could get $5 a day for working at the factory. This is also back in the, you know, there's so many interesting things when you talk about factory towns, when you talk about the building and the growing, the changing, the evolution of America, so much of it harkens back to the days where you could work a factory job, $5 a day, which is was great pay at that time. But you could have someone who's working and could support an entire family by working at, you know, one of the factories. And then, of course, we can talk about now how there are not so many factory jobs, how a lot of manufacturing has gone out of the States and the American dream, et cetera, et cetera. It's a whole other thing. But we touched a little on that too, because in the short story collection, we have so many varied experiences. We are living the life. And I say living the life because when reading this short story collection, it feels so close. Like you literally do feel like this invisible person that is just watching people live their lives and witnessing even their deepest secrets, their deepest longings, from someone coming to America and missing Lebanon to someone who, I thought this was really amazing. There's a Titanic story, something that's related to the Titanic, but not from the, not in the way that you would think. The focus is not on what you would expect, which would be being on the boat and then, you know, the iceberg and everything. A new bride with a husband that you don't totally know, but seeing, seeing them getting to know one another, seeing the romance unfold. I, I'm smiling because it was so touching and so sweet and so real. We also meet a woman who befriends her neighbor's new wife, young wife, who's so fresh and just doesn't really, you get the impression that she's not naive, but I will say fresh. And then she has to deal with some harsh realities and the bond that they develop. You meet someone named Speedo Man. <laughs> I felt like this was one of the stories that almost, that really blended the real and the unreal in a way that made you wonder what had really happened. It's like, almost like a, 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 a smidge of fantastic in the story. Not quite magical realism, but a slight raising of the veil between what is and isn't real. Just without telling you too much, there's a, there's someone who comes in, we meet Speedo Man, and he wears Speedos, and he inspires so much longing for Lebanon, because what, because he wears, so I have to back up. So we meet Speedo Man, and I don't want to tell you too much, but I will say that he has different Speedos. He is a stranger, He's a stranger come to Dearborn and he, and everyone is intrigued and he wears Speedos that have various symbols on the back. Like each Speedo has a different symbol and this inspires a lot of nostalgia in the men. For the women, there isn't as much nostalgia as there are questions about their past and their present, their current husbands, their families. In another story, we meet a young man who is trying to find his way in life and figures out that he's really, really great at reciting the Quran and he meets a record producer who lives in town. Everyone knows who he is, but it's the character is so hilarious. Now we get a we, we hear about this record producer in another story because it's just a quick mention when someone's talking about who lives in what neighborhood and it's just like a quick little a quick little throwaway line about this R&B producer who's Arab American and lives 
you know, a young guy who lives in town. And so in another story, we meet him and we learn a little more about him. And he is hilarious because he speaks. He speaks in this black scent, not all the time, but he speaks in a black scent that isn't really like really right. <laughs> it's like, you know what he's saying, but he'll say things like, oh, well, I can't even say it. Like if you said, I've been told you that. Like I've been, I've been, I've been said that. He'll say like, I, I've been say that. Like so, some of the things that he just says are hilarious, but he has a really good heart. <laughs> But he's really funny too because aside from that black scent, he also is very determined to not curse. So he'll say like fudge a lot or he'll just say things that are just really funny and on top of the, the wrong black scent. But he's he's a really great character. Like I got, even in meeting him in that one story, like I got so much more through him. You have characters like that that just will really stick out. For instance, there's another story in which a, 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 a man grows up watching his dad stuff chickens. They're called money chickens. And so his dad is like, you, you, we, you have to put money away. I am not a person who would stick money in chickens, but I, I do come like one generation away from elders who don't trust banks and would put money in places. Apparently, I guess, it's, is it illegal? Someone's in the story said that it's illegal to do that. But I'm like, why would it be illegal to stuff money in frozen poultry. I might have to Google that. I, I didn't think it's something that I would have to know, but now I, I really do want to know if it's illegal. Like on principle, I feel like I reserve the right to stuff my money into frozen chickens if I so desire. You meet another character who is genderqueer and he's not so much questioning his identity, but more trying to just get in touch with his other side in a way that would be safe and freeing for himself. And I won't say too much about that story, but um, I really love that one. There's just so much in this collection. It's so endearing, like I said. It's, I really did feel like I was just sitting in Dearborn, floating through the space and watching everyone just live their lives. Prasan Zayadeen captures that so, so well, like the city itself. I just love this. I actually want to go to Dearborn as well. Such an endearing, fascinating, cozy, collection you definitely hear about hardship because so many of the residents who are coming to uh, Dearborn from Lebanon they do make mention of the war the civil war the Israeli bombings so you do hear that but it's not like the stories are that those are at the forefront those are part of various people's backstories and we just see how those things affected their lives. It's not just one resident, it's many of the residents actually. Pick up this short story collection, Dearborn by Hazan Zayadeen. You will read, you'll wanna keep reading. You won't wanna put it down. You'll just read one story after the other. They're such gems. Be sure to join us at the end of the month. I will be chatting with the author on my IG live at Amory. Also follow at Amory's book clubs. Follow along with the book club with this book, but also other selections. And follow along with the hashtags, read with Amory, Amory's book club. I will see you at the end of the month for the chat. In the meantime, happy reading. How's the Evil Crack?